Hi, I'm Philip. Um, today we're going to show you how to insulate a wall to stop the noise going through, through a common wall. So we are here in a bedroom in a townhouse and we have a common wall with a neighbor. Now, in this bedroom they can hear everything, all the noise, all people talking, television, it's not soundproof enough so they can't sleep. They use another bedroom for the moment. So the best way to soundproof a wall actually will be to build a second partition wall in front of the existing one with a small, small gap between. That's the best way, but you're going to lose about 100 millimeters, uh, which is about four inches. Um, and the people here don't want to lose too much space. So we're going to compromise and find a solution, which is about, we're going to lose about 45 mils. That's a bit less than two inches. Um, and we're going to use a furring channel, which is this, this profile here. And we're going to install that on the wall um, all parallel and fix that here. So the difference with a normal furring channel and a resilient furring channel is the profile. We, a resilient furring channel, uh, we fix only on one side here. There is not another lip here. So they try to minimize any contact with the wall, basically. So that's what we use. Is It's really designed for acoustics to reduce transmission and reduce vibration to this. So once we install this, we're going to install another product between the furring channel, which is a very high density uh, polyester absorbers, uh, absorber. And we're going to glue that on the wall between the furring channel. Now, this is quite important because we create an air gap, a small cavity between the plasterboard, the new plasterboard, and the existing plasterboard. And each time you have an air gap, uh, you've got reverberation inside and you've got a bit of echo and the sound increase. So this is to reduce that uh, increase of sound. Um, so we're going to remove the cornice because we must go right to the ceiling. We cannot stop at the cornice. We're going to remove the cornice going right to the ceiling. We're going to remove the skirting board. And then we're going to install new cornice, new skirting boards when the wall will be finished. So let's start and see how you go. Alright, we did install all the furring channels. Uh, the space is maximum 600 mil, roughly two feet, I guess. Um, then I'm going, I sprayed the wall already with the glue and I'm going to just add the absorbers. Just glue it on the wall. It doesn't need to be, to be precise. We can have gaps like any absorber, any sun absorbers. You don't need to have um, to be very accurate. You can have gaps here. There. It just doesn't matter. It's, it works in proportion of the square meters you install. Right. So we finished now this first part. We did install the resilient firming channels. We did glue the uh, sun absorbers. There's one important thing is that we have to make sure the sun absorber you put on the wall it's not as thick as the firming channel because. Because the, it's not good if you have the, the sun absorber getting compressed between the wall and the, the plasterboard you're going to install. Because if it gets compressed a bit, you, you, you create a breach and the sun will, will transmit uh, between. So you need a small air gap between the sun absorber and uh, the furring channels and the plasterboard. Um, another thing is, you may ask, why don't using timber buttons? Um, well, because timber will transmit more vibration again than a steel stud or steel uh, furring channels. We use resilient furring channels because we minimize the, uh, the contact with the existing wall and that's quite important. So that's what we try to do, minimize any transmission of vibration from, from the existing wall to the new wall. Okay, that's about... Uh, it for this. Now we are ready to, to install the plasterboard and we're going to start with this. We're going to put two layers of plasterboard. In this case will be 13 mil, but it's a 
special uh, special 30 mil. It's uh, soundproofing uh, plasterboard. Uh, again, to minimize, we could use 16 mil um, plasterboard for fire, but it's we need to use as dense as possible uh, plasterboard. So we use a special one, which is for soundproofing, and it's 30 mil thick. And we're going to put two layers increase the mass and between the two layers we're going to install a viscoelastic membrane so we talk about that once we're there after the first layer ah, yes and one more thing you may ask why we don't glue directly the plasterboard or fix the plasterboard on the existing wall because the bigger the air gap the better for acoustic so uh, using the same plasterboard against the wall or separate from the wall will give you a different result so it's much better the bigger the distance the better and that's why we, we try to have an air gap between, that's quite, quite important as well. All right, the first layer of plasterboard is done. So um, now I'm going to do something important, is to, um, to put some normal gap in the joints. So I want to seal everything well properly. All right, what we did now, we finished the first layer of plasterboard, we finished to seal all around and all the gaps. Um, now the second step after that is to install a viscoelastic membrane like this material here. It's just suspended like a curtain. Uh, you can fix on the top with screws or just glue the top. Um, it's this material actually. What that material does is um, prevent both boards of vibrating. So we install that in sandwich between two, two boards. It can be plaster board, it can be a particle board, any type of boards, and it will prevent the boards of vibrating. So theoretically, if the board doesn't vibrate, it doesn't transmit vibration on the other side. So it doesn't transmit sound on the other side. But actually, but it, it, it doesn't, that's in theory. It practically just reduces the transmission furthermore. And uh, so what we're going to do now, we're going to install another layer of plasterboard, 13 mil, the same one, the acoustic one that we installed uh, first. And then after the job will be finished, we just have to, to do the plasterboard and, and that's it. So we're going to put the plasterboard, screw it through into the, the furring channel behind. And, uh, and that's all we have to do. So we really try to achieve a maximum result uh, using the minimum space as possible. All right, the job is finished, the wall is done, it's just ready to be painted now, and that's it. We did the cornice, we did the skirting boards, everything is done and sealed. We can't hear anything from the other side anymore, so I think people will have a very good night tonight and for every night after. Um, I hope you found some very good uh, and useful tips in this video. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to call me. Um, thank you.